So first I should tell you what WordNik is. WordNik is an online dictionary, so I want to define it. That's what people who make dictionaries do. WordNik is a place for all the words. Not just the cool words, not just the pretty words, not just the popular words, but all the words. And we want to tell you everything we can about them. Not just definitions. We want to tell you about the ecosystem of a word. So what do we mean by the ecosystem of a word? Well, the ecosystem is the world that a word lives in. And that world could include example sentences, definitions, tweets from Twitter, statistics, the word Scrabble score, pronunciations, uh, related words, pictures from Flickr, basically anything that would help people understand more things about more words more of the time. So that's what WordNik is. And why is WordNik here at Web 2.0? Well, we've heard a lot about the web of things, the Internet of Things, web squared. So I once said that the Internet was made of only two things, words and enthusiasm. But words are really things. If you think about words, I'd like to point out here that I've managed to get the word sex not so subliminally into this presentation. But if you think about words, they're really things. You can think about a word as a highly distributed thing that can occur in millions of places over long periods of time, and yet is the sum of all of those things put together. So words are things, and you can think of all the data about a word as a flock of data. And you can think about how each thing in that flock of data can affect what a word means. And thinking about each of those pieces of that flock, well, we think that that's a very web squared. We think that's really interesting. And we think that's exactly what WordNik wants to do and where WordNik wants to be. So in fact, we want to map the English language. We really want to map the English language. We think that if you know all the coordinates for as many of those, those birds in that flock for each word, then you can find out some things that are really interesting. And so that's what we're trying to do. For instance, if you know the coordinate of a word, for instance, uh, the word cheeseburger, however it's spelled, and the word donut, however it's spelled, they appear in the same kinds of places, they hang out with the same kinds of other words, they act the same way, and they do the same things. They have different meanings, but they have the same coordinates. So, this relationship between words is something that we're really interested in. And, and words really do have relationships. They have relationships to other words. They have relationships to people. They have relationships to places. They have relationships to times and sounds and all sorts of things. Words are about relationships. In fact, there's a, there's a word graph just in the same way that there is a social graph. And like the social graph, the word graph belongs to the community, in this case, the users and the speakers of the English language. And because WordNik is, uh, thankfully, a member in good standing of the community of speakers and users of English, we want to share the parts of the word graph that we found so far. So uh, today, we're happy to announce that we're releasing the first of our APIs for English. And in this presentation, the role of the API will be played by this giant Tesla coil. So. <laughs> APIs are kind of boring to look at, and Tesla coils are not. So that's, that's why the Tesla coil is going to play this role in this presentation. So uh, the first of our APIs is a definitions API. It will release hundreds of thousands of definitions from the Century Dictionary, which has been called one of the great works of uh, in American English reference. We're also releasing an examples API. So it will have a sampling of examples from our huge API corpus of about oh, around 3 billion running words of text. And also a, a word frequency API, which will give word frequency data from our alpha corpus. But wait, there's more. We will also be releasing, uh, releasing today uh, an API for the WordNik word of the day, in case you want to make it look different than we have it look now, and an autocomplete corpus, uh, an autocomplete API. So we know that there are lots of cool things that can be done with the data that we're collecting. 
cool things that are not even dictionary related, if there can be any cool things that aren't dictionary related. But so we want to share this data as much as possible because we're really excited to see the cool things that people will be able to do with it. And in fact, uh, some of our alpha API partners have already started to do cool things with these APIs. Uh, wait for it, here we go. This word was chosen completely randomly. Uh, but the random word button is really addictive. I managed to trash the battery on my phone yesterday through abuse of the random word button. So these APIs are working now, and we're going to be releasing them today. So they're available now. You can go to that URL to sign up. There's API docs. There's uh, sample code. Uh, we are asking you to tell us what you want to do with these APIs because, quite frankly, if we have to prioritize, we're going to prioritize on coolness. So tell us <laughs> the cool things that you want to do with the API, and that will help you get signed up. We will sign up people today, and you can follow us on Twitter at WordNickAPI. And also, we'll be releasing one more API for English every week for the next couple of months, and then we'll keep releasing APIs for English at longer intervals until people stop using English. So we're really excited to see the cool things that people will do with the new WordNick APIs for English. We can't wait to see them. And thank you so much for your attention. Thanks a lot. <laughs>